Welcome back. Okay, so after we defined our site, before we actually start building Dreamweaver tags and I'm sorry, building CSS rules and media query rules, I wanted to share with you why it's very exciting to use Dreamweaver as a tool for building your site. More importantly, to use Dreamweaver for building media queries. And this is a great feature of Dreamweaver that very few people understand and comprehend and know. I have students that have been working in Dreamweaver for 10 years and they don't know half of what I teach my students in the very first couple of courses. As an example, in the previous video you just watched defining a site, I have tons of people working in Dreamweaver for years. I never understood that or never did that. That's going to save you a lot of time or even FTPing from Dreamweaver. They use programs like Transmit or Fetch or WS Pro to FTP. And I'm like, why when that's what Dreamweaver does? Dreamweaver will do this for you. Now, here's what I want to share with you, which is really, really cool. If I go to Live View right now, one of the things I can do is I'm going to take this URL and I'm going to paste in the Time Magazine URL. I'm going to do that and hit the return key. So watch this. Now, this is going to be dependent on, of course, the speed of your internet access. But right there inside of Dreamweaver, I did not download the site. Right inside of Dreamweaver, I can see exactly how the time.com website was put together. The video we looked at in a previous video. So here's all my CSS rules. Now, again, this happens to be a WordPress site. So here's my style menu, here's my article, here's my article tag, fig caption tags, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm just sharing with you that these are all the JavaScript files, these are all, all the template files, these are all, all the, uh, the CSS files used inside of this site, inside of Dreamweaver. And again, I dynamically access that page right from Dreamweaver. So as an example, if I click up here for a second, if I go up here and I click, uh, follow links continuously. Now I can either control click or I can follow links continuously. So if I have that option selected and I select business as an example, it's going to take me right to that page. How cool is that? So this is going to show me all the, the outside elements, the XML files, this JavaScript files, everything else it took to build these pages. Again, guys, this is not something you're going to get in most other courses. I'm sharing with you my technique of how to do this the right way using Dreamweaver as a tool for developing websites to do all the heavy lifting. Now, let's say as an example that I don't really care about my JavaScript files. I want to simply key on my, if I click here, I can see more of my files. What I want to do is I want to filter this to just show me my CSS files. So if I click right here, I can basically create a custom filter. And what I want to basically see is CSS files. So I can do dot CSS and hit OK. So what that's going to do right away, it's going to get rid of all those JavaScript files here. They're still there for me to utilize if I want to view them, but I basically filtered it from here. Okay, so right now I have a custom filter enabled that I can just see my CSS files. Now again, this happens to be a WordPress site. So there's my WordPress CSS. There's my WordPress CSS file right there. Now this is a minified file, which means that all the spaces have been taken out. So if this is looking like a bunch of garbly goo, well, that's a technical word, by the way, you might want to take a note on that. Then that's because it's the minified version. It's the smallest file size available for phone apps and small devices that don't have a lot of RAM. And this is my custom CSS. And again, if I click there, I can see what's going on with this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to go back to my source code for the page. So I can immediately see the source code. Well, actually, that's the source code for my page. So my mistake on that. So I'm going to go to design mode and stay in live view mode. So again, what this enables you to do is you can basically access your different pages from this directory. Okay, to save a little bit of time here on download time, I simply downloaded this page we looked at before in a previous video. So I'm going to double click this just to get it out of the way. And I'm going to, I'm in live mode right now so I can actually see how this is set up with my different media queries. So as an example, right inside of Dreamweaver, I can see how this was set up. So if I click here, here's my desktop version. Now I'm using Dreamweaver CS6 and I highly suggest guys, if you want to be good at this, if you want to make money, if you're going to be a professional, invest in modern 
tools. I do get emails on occasion from you guys saying, do you teach CS 5.5 and CS 5 and CS 4? Well, yeah, I did four or five years ago or two or three years ago, but no longer because I don't work backwards. I work forward. Now, for those of you, and I, no offense, guys, but for those of you that are saying, well, I can't afford the upgrade, well, Adobe makes it very simple for you. You can get the entire cloud version for as little as $39, $29, $39 a month. And if you just want Dreamweaver, it's 20 bucks a month. Now, for those of you to say, well, I'm on a budget. Well, if you're not making at least 20 bucks a month, if you can't afford 20 bucks a month doing web development, then perhaps you're not taking my classes. So if you take my classes, I will share with you how to make money doing this. So don't be so myopic to think, well, I don't need the most current upgrade. You do. You should have the most current version of the software because it is investment in your tool set. Now, what I also want to talk about is I have, I own all my software literally hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of software over the past 26 years, but I never paid for the software. What do I mean by that? Well, it's a legal copy of all my software, but I build that into the client's job, whether it's a brochure, whether it's package design, whether it's a video plugin I need, I build it into the course of the cost of the job when I build a client. So that's how that works. Let the clients pay for your software. Let the clients pay for your web assist extensions. Let the clients pay for your WordPress custom extensions. And, and custom premium thieves. Anyway, enough of that. So I just want to share with you Dreamweaver enables you to basically see my different sizes here. Okay, and if I go here, of course, I can see my smartphone device. So it's really, really cool in how they have this set up. So if I go, if I double click back up here again, then I can actually see my different media queries. Now you can't technically see that this is a media query. The, the media query maximum width right here is set up here, but it's actually in the code. Now, without being, you know, totally obvious, all Dreamweaver does is write code. That's what it does. That's all it does. It writes pure code that the browser interprets. So that's why this is a great tool. So I have a media query for a maximum width of 949 and media queries for a maximum width of 110 pixels. And also have media queries for the screen. Okay, so I'm going to share with you step by step how to basically look at a site, build a site, reproduce a site, and get started. So in our next video, we'll build our first series of media queries inside of Dreamweaver. So stay tuned.